So today I'd like to tell you about a case that I had recently. The case is a rather unfortunate 40-year-old gentleman who is riding a motorcycle and managed to run into one of our local wild animals, a uh, white-tailed deer, which completely wiped him off of his bike and uh, so EMS was called and they brought him into us. And as he gets in there, he's complaining of a lot of leg pain. So you go through your standard ATLS workup for any trauma patient. You go through your A, B, Cs, get to deformity or disability, and then exposure. And as you do this, you kind of see that his knee looks like this picture right down here. And you can see that that is not quite a normal looking knee. Tell is right in here, and the rest of the knee is kind of pushed backwards and laterally. And so you finish up the rest of your workup, and you go ahead and you get your radiographs, and you can see right in here is this femur. Patella is over here, and the tibia is kind of right in here, and the fibula is all the way over here with a decent amount of space between them. So what are you dealing with here? If you already figured it out, this is a posterior knee dislocation. And these are pretty uncommon injuries, but we think that they're getting more common due to all of the major trauma and motorcycle accidents and things like that that we see. And they're generally high energy, The scary thing about some of these is that they've been reported with such seemingly mundane things as stepping in a hole or karate kicks. And those type of injuries kind of scare me because they're easier to miss than the obviously dislocated patients like this that come in after major trauma. But they're really a hyperextension injury as well from a mechanism standpoint. Now, what's the problem with a knee dislocation? The problem is associated vascular injury. And with that, the risk of amputation. So the risk of vascular injury in these types of patients is roughly 10 to 40%, which is pretty high. The amputation rate really depends on how quick you manage to recognize and care for these patients. If the injury goes unnoticed or unmanaged for more than eight hours, your amputation rate is as high as 85%. Manage it faster than that, so under eight hours, and your amputation rate's all the way down at 15%, which still is pretty high, but it beats the alternative of delayed recognition and management. Now the problem is many of these may reduce spontaneously and so when they come in they don't quite look as bad as our poor gentleman here but because of the anatomy of the knee you should have laxity with your ACL and PCL so you pick up the femur to do your Lachman and things just slide all over the place. Unfortunately even in vascular injuries, 10% of those vascular injuries still have distal pulses. So how do you really work up and manage these patients? The pathway that I like is out of an article in the American Journal of Emergency Medicine, which kind of goes like this. So knee dislocation, or suspected knee dislocation, if it's obvious, go ahead and reduce and splint. Now somewhere along the lines, you're going to get some imaging. 
kind of like we did above. But now that we have it reduced, you need to check on your circulation. And there are a couple of things that you need to watch out for. And this is where we split it up into those hard signs of vascular injury and the soft signs. Or no signs. So what are the hard signs? If you're thinking expanding hematoma, pulse deficits, bruise, or other signs of ischemia, you're absolutely correct. Your soft signs are more things like a stable hematoma, associated peroneal nerve injury, which causes what? That's right, foot drop. Or signs of a recent hemorrhage that have since stopped. So if you have these hard signs, you need to get immediate consult from vascular. And they're likely going to do an arteriogram. If instead you only have the soft signs, then you can go ahead and get an ankle brachial index. And if it's greater than 0.9, then you're going to go ahead and admit for OBS. These are not patients that are going home. And they'll do serial ABIs or maybe get an arteriogram. If it is less than 0 0.9, then you want to, again, get your vascular on board. And they may decide to still go ahead and do the arteriogram and see what's going on. Now, the resolution of our poor gentleman listed above was that he had some hard signs of distal ischemia so he went for his emergent arteriogram. And this is what we saw. So you kind of see the, the tibia here, femurs up here, and here's your artery. And you see all of these little defects in the wall of the artery. And those are all vascular injuries. And this poor gentleman actually transected his artery. And despite the fact that we recognized this right away, was unable to be salvaged, and he ended up with an amputation. So even if you do everything right, sometimes the case doesn't turn out quite as well. As we mentioned above, 15% will have an amputation even recognized right away. But early and expedient management really gives you the opportunity to make a difference in these patients and to hopefully save a limb in the long run. So that's about all I have to say for knee dislocations. So watch out for them in the clinical arena and we'll talk to you again soon.